Leroy's Pokemon Black and White Walkthrough, Part 46. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we are here at the Pokemon League, the Elite Four, the end of the game that everyone looks forward to, and it's time to get serious. So we're not going to do any shoutouts for the Elite Four, we're just going to get down to serious business here. So a few things I want to talk about. First of all, when you go into the Elite Four, you're going to be stuck in there and you're not going to be able to leave to go and heal up at this Pokemon Center. So make sure you stock up on items, that's the first thing I want to talk about. I've already done a lot of these things off screen, but I'll just show you right here. Um, Hyper Potions are your best friend, it's the best healing item for the Elite Four. Stock up on those, I got like 25, just because I like to over-prepare. Full Restores are also pretty good because they um, heal up status additionally. Revives are nice because when your Pokemon get knocked out, they will stay knocked out without revives. And um, full heals for all your burns and poisons and everything like that. Those are the main items you want to buy at the Mart when preparing. Um, in addition, you're going to want to find all of your like proteins, carbos, calcium, all those stat boosting items, and use them all. Don't leave any of them behind. Use them all. Also, this is the time to use your rare candies. Um, so quickly, I'm going to go through my team here. Um, I do have items on all my Pokemon. I would highly recommend finding good items in your bag to attach to your Pokemon, because it's better to have them than to not. Because there's a lot of good items out there that will come in handy, like the Expert Belt, for instance, right here. Um, I've made a few adjustments to some of my moves. I'm just going to scroll through them here. Um, like, for instance, I put Skyled on um, my Emboar here, just for some variety. There's a lot of good TMs that your Pokemon can probably learn, so you should just run through them quickly, see what your team can get. Some of my Pokemon are the same. But yeah, use your good TMs, like Toxic. I put that on a couple Pokemon because it's a really nice move to have for the Elite Four. Um, just definitely check out all of those things. All right, now that we got a good look at my team, we'll head into the actual Elite Four here. And I already talked to this guy once, but you pretty much just say yes and he'll let you in. Um, so yeah, we're ready to go. Now that we have everything prepared, it's time for the Elite Four. And now there is no turning back. We are locked and trapped in here. So there are four different stairs you can go up. This is different than every other Elite Four in any Pokemon game, because you can actually choose which um, Elite Four member you fight. Um, so you can go around in the circle here. You have a Ghost type in the front, a Dark type in the top left, a Psychic in the top right, and the very last one's a Fighting type. I'm just going to go in the traditional circle and start with the Ghost. Um, you can kind of plan it out, because you can tell by your own Pokemon which ones will be easier to fight. And then hopefully when you get up more levels, the harder opponents will come towards the end and they'll be a little bit easier, but I'm not really wor too worried about the ghost type right here, so I'm fine with that. But yeah, now that we're ready to go here, let's just get down to business. This room's kind of creepy, though. It's a good setting for a ghost type trainer. So this is Chantal. She has purple hair. Because there's always, like, crazy hair colors with the Elite Four members. I don't really get it, but it's a common theme throughout the games. But yeah, Chantel's a pretty good ghost-type trainer. And by the way, um... Sorry to interrupt this epic moment, but... All of the Elite Four members have the exact same levels on their Pokémon, so don't be too worried about that. They're all level 48 and 50. So she's gonna start off with Confagragus, which might be one of the hardest Pokémon you face in all of the Elite Four. It's a pure ghost-type, meaning it's weak to ghost and dark. Um, it knows the moves Shadow Ball, Psychic, Will-O-Wisp, and Grass Knots. Now, this thing is a tank defensively. It can take a lot of hits. Um, if you have to choose between Special and Physical Attacks, Special is the way to go because it has way better physical defense. Um, but it's still pretty tough to take out either way. I'm just going to strike it with a Thunder because that's like my most powerful move. Um, and we'll see how that does. Confagragus can hit pretty hard back, though. It's got some good Special Attack. And holy crap, we got a critical hit! That is how you start off the Elite Four. That thing is done. That was way too easy. Oh my god. But yeah, Confagragus is super annoying because it can burn you and everything, but just watch out for its Shadow Ball. And if you have some good attacking Pokemon on your side, you should be okay. Um, so next up is Chandelure. This is like her strongest Pokemon. It's level 50. It's a Ghost and Fire type, so in addition to Ghost and Dark types, Ground, Water, and Rock are also super effective. So you should take advantage of that. You probably have, like, a water type or something on your team. Um, Chandelure is, like, the opposite of Confagragus. It's, like, a super powerful special attacker. And it has some good defenses, so it's it's nothing to mess around with. This thing is really powerful. It knows Fire Blast, Shadow Ball, Psychic, and Payback, so it's got some good moves. What I think I'm going to do here is use my move Volt Switch. Now, what that does is it damages the opponents, but switches back, so... That way I can switch out to a better Pokemon, but still get some damage on it, which is kind of nice. So I think I'm going to go over to my uh, Gabbro, um, because it's a Rock-type, which is super effective, so it should do alright. 
Oh, and Fire Blast missed. Okay, I'm getting really lucky in this battle so far. I was kind of just sending him in there to get knocked out, thinking maybe I could get one attack off, but I'll go with a Rock Slide here. Um, but this thing mostly uses Shadow Ball and Fire Blast, so if you have any Pokemon that resist those types, go ahead and send them in, because that'll be pretty useful. But yeah, this thing didn't give us any trouble because um, of the missed Fire Blast, so we got a critical hit and a miss. I'll admit we've got some luck early on, but I still had a backup plan in case Golurk died, or in, I mean in case um, in case Gabbro died anyways. But yeah, Golurk is the Pokemon she's sending in next. I'm trying to think about what I'm going to do here. I think I'm going to go over to Seismitoad because, um, I don't know, I, I don't really need Gigalith right now, but I have a pretty good strategy for Seismitoad. Anyways, Golurk is a ghost and dark, or sorry, a ghost and ground type. So it's weak to ghost, dark, water, grass, and ice. So again, some additional weaknesses because of the dual typing. This thing has really good physical attack, so she's kind of all over the spectrum here. She's got physical attackers, special attackers, defensive Pokemon. Um, but yeah, Golurk knows Curse, Earthquake, Brick Break, and Shadow Punch. So what I'm going to do is use Rain Dance. What Rain Dance does for me is it... Um, raises my speed because of my ability, and it boosts up water type moves, so that should give me an easy kill here, especially since he used Curse. Golurk kind of screws itself over with Curse because that drains out half of its HP to inflict a curse on you. Um, but as long as you switch out, you don't really have to deal with that. So Golurk's not too bad um, to put damage on and knock out, you just really need to watch out for its Earthquake. It's a good idea to send in like a flying type Pokemon or anything with Levitate to avoid that Earthquake, or just something that resists it. Just don't send anything that'll get knocked out easily by its Earthquake, and you shouldn't be um, in bad shape. Now, for her last Pokemon, I'm going to go back to my Galvantula. Um, this last one is Jellicent. It's a water and ghost type, so she has a lot of dual typings. Um, I kind of like the male Jellicent better because it's blue. I don't really like the pink one, but Jellicent is a really good special defensive Pokemon. So, physical attacks are definitely the way to go. I'm just going with um, Galvantula right now because I can hit it with a Thunder. And while it's raining, Thunder has perfect accuracy, so I can get a good, nice, clean hit on it. And hopefully knock it out. Um, we'll see how much it does. Maybe not quite. Yeah, because it has really good special defense. But yeah, Jellicent knows Surf there. It also has Shadow Ball, Brine, and Energy Ball, so a nice variety of attacks. Um, but they're all special attacking, so a good special defensive Pokemon will do pretty good. And yeah, you can always count on them to heal up with a full restore once they're in that red zone for HP. So you kind of have to try to avoid that if possible. Um, maybe use a little bit of a weaker move and then get it, go for a two-hit KO instead of doing this and having her heal up again. But yeah, its ability right there can disable your moves. So now I just lost out on my Thunder, which kind of sucks because she's going to heal up again. They'll only heal up two times, but... Um, what I'll do instead is just go with a Volt Switch and go over to um, Simi Sage to finish off the job. And this goes back to what I was saying earlier, physical Pokemon or physical attacking Pokemon do a better job against Jellicent. This thing is just like a big time special defensive tank. So yeah, Chantel has like a physical attacker, a special attacker, a physical defensive Pokemon, and a special defensive Pokemon, so she will find a way to screw you over in one way or another, but a move like Seed Bomb just takes care of this thing pretty easily physical attacks do a very good job against Jellicent. So there we go, that was actually really easy. I was expecting this battle to be a bit tougher, but it is only the first one, so possibly we'll get harder as we go along. So there we go, we defeated the Ghost-type Master Chantel, which means we are one-fourth done with the Elite Four. And next time we'll probably be taking on the Dark-type user, so you can go ahead and go to this little teleportation platform. And you're right back here, only we have one taken care of. Um, so we'll have to heal up our Pokemon, and next time we'll enter the second room and test our skills against the next member of the Elite Four, so stay tuned for that, and I'll see you guys all next time.